Oh, hey guys, this is my 2014 TW200, and I've been putting off replacing these dust boots for way too long, and I've actually been putting electrical tape around it just to kind of hold them together. I really like having dust boots because your uh, seals will last a lot longer, and it just keeps everything a lot cleaner in there. But unfortunately, to replace these, you actually have to pull the front forks off, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do that and go ahead and replace them. Let's get started. Guys, when working on anything, it's always a good idea to wear some safety glasses to protect your eyes. I'll take this motorcycle jack and then jack it up. Make sure it's on a lock so it's nice and safe. I like to put one part of the lift on this uh, cross member and then I got the aftermarket skid plate that just goes on the front part. So this motorcycle lift has lashing points and I just put a ratcheting strap with a towel over the seat and I'm just gonna tighten it down a little bit. I went ahead and added one on the front as well because when I thought about it, once we move all the stuff off the front, it's gonna wanna tip backwards. It does not wanna fall off of there. Let's go ahead and remove the front fender. It's four 10 millimeter bolts. You probably don't have to remove the front fairing because you can get to the bolts. However, I'm just gonna remove it really quick just so it's easier to show stuff for the video. It's just a big JIS screw. And it just pops down and comes off. Also guys, I don't recommend attempting this job unless you're completely comfortable doing it because this is a very important part of the motorcycle and you have to use torque wrenches properly uh, because there's just so much that could go wrong with the brake system and the front suspension. So this is a warning. Uh, you are fully responsible for your own actions to make sure the job is done properly. Next, we can disconnect the Speedo cable from the gear. Some needle nose pliers just to help you loosen it a little bit and then it should spin off. Probably not a bad idea to clean it up with a paper towel and it just pulls out. Now we can remove the wheel and I'll hold the front axle bolt with a 19 millimeter closed end wrench. And then I'll remove the 19 millimeter nut. There's a washer, uh, make sure not to lose that. While supporting the tire, we can remove the axle. Front tire will drop right down. You can roll it out. Uh, be sure not to lose this or this. Check it out, with the wheel not on there, the bottom of the forks actually move independently. Next, let's pull off this uh, plastic holder bracket and we'll just use a uh, P2 JIS screwdriver to remove that little screw right there. And we can just pull that out and it just comes off. Also, make sure not to lose this little nut because it's just pressure fit in there. Now we can remove these two bolts and it's just a five millimeter hex driver. Next, it's a 12 millimeter to remove the two brake caliper bolts. Be sure to hold the brake caliper so it doesn't just swing down. We can throw the brake caliper on a bungee cord, just get it out of the way. It's best not to uh, allow it to hang by the brake line. So it's a good idea to note the height of the top of the forks sticking out of the triple clamp is about what it is from the factory, just about six millimeters. However, the instructions say it's six millimeters, not including the ring on that top bolt. So. I'm not sure exactly which one is right, but I'll probably just try to keep it at six millimeters where it was uh, because that's worked pretty well for me so far. Next, we can use a 12 millimeter to pull off the four bolts on the lower for the forks. Then it's a single 10 millimeter on each side, but uh, I don't know if these will just fall out or not. Let's keep my foot under there. I don't think they will. We can go ahead and remove these. And now they just kind of wiggle out and down. And there's the first fork. Okay, now we can just loosen up this uh, clamp screw on the upper part of the boot. And then the bottom part basically just uh, pops off and the whole thing should slide right out. Check that out, it's nice and dry. I would upgrade the front suspension, but I honestly 
don't have time right now. Someday though. I am gonna clean some of the dirt out of here. I'm just gonna use some uh, exterior detailer. Spray it on. And then use a lint-free towel to try to clean all the dirt. You can kinda push the fork in a little bit. Make sure you get all the dirt around the dust seal. Having dust boots on there really do help these seals last a long time. Some more of that detailer. Make sure you have a nice clean rag. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and try to use a little bit of AT205 reseal on the outer dust seals just to keep them nice and pliable. And hopefully it works. If I have any problems doing that and they leak really bad afterwards, I'll let you guys know. But I'll kind of just uh, compress them a little bit. Get it worked in there and uh, wipe it off. Might as well go ahead and uh, clean the rest of the fork up while it's here. All right, that looks pretty good. So I actually bought some OEM Yamaha dust boots. And let me tell you, these things are not cheap. And I bought these a long time ago, so they're probably even more now. But there's the part number. And I actually bought some uh, aftermarket ones so we can compare. Here's the difference. These are OEM and the aftermarket ones look a little bigger and they do seem a bit thinner. And the OEM ones have uh, drain holes at the bottom. The aftermarket ones don't. The holes actually might be for air to escape as you're uh, bouncing up and down on the trail. The aftermarket ones have little holes right there. But go ahead and transfer the clamp onto the OEM one. And it does seem like it would probably work on the aftermarket ones as well. However, it will cover up those holes, but you could always put your own holes at the bottom. Let's go ahead and just see what the aftermarket one is like. As you can tell, it doesn't really lock into place at the bottom, but that's what the zip ties are for. And if you wanted to, you could always put like some actual hose clamps or something on there. They're a little, little floppy. They don't look too bad. It is quite a bit of a price difference. To make it a bit easier to get on, you could always use some uh, silicone spray, just a little bit. It's definitely useful for the bottom part. I'm gonna wait until we actually have it on the bike before I tighten this down. And then do the same with the other one. So since we have the forks off, it's a good time to go ahead and move the steering back and forth. Just make sure it moves uh, nice and smooth. There will be a little bit of resistance because of the uh, cables. But it's kind of interesting, it, uh, there's like an indent right in the center. I'm uh, assuming that's normal. See, it kind of holds it right there in the center. And we also want to make sure there's no play in any direction. Feels nice and tight. I probably should rebuild the steering bearing, but uh, I'll probably do that later. So I just don't have a lot of time right now. But when I do, I will make a video on it. But that feels pretty good. And go ahead and clean any dirt out of these. I personally put blue Loctite on pretty much all of my bolts on this bike, besides the axle bolt because it uses a lock nut. We can go ahead and thread the top clamp bolts in just a little bit. Now we can slide in the front forks and we just wanna make sure uh, they go on the right sides. This is the one with the caliper because uh, it's got the two bolts, so it goes on the left side. Slide that in, should uh, go in smoothly. And then we can move it in or out until it's poking out at about six millimeters. You wanna be pretty precise. If you tighten it just enough, you can actually wiggle it back and forth and change the height up of it. Yeah, it won't you know, slide straight out. Got the caliper locked in at exactly uh, six millimeters there. And that's pretty much perfect. And once you get it exact, now we can go ahead and just uh, snug it up just so it doesn't change. We can do the same with the other side. Now we can insert the other four lower clamp bolts. Just thread them in by hand. 
And then all six bolts get torqued down to 23 Newton meters. And I would uh, tighten them kind of back and forth on the bottom clamps, just so you know that they're nice and even. Maybe just do like a quarter turn of each one. And you'll hear and feel that click. And then the bolts for the top clamp. It's extremely important that all of these bolts are properly torqued to spec because your life could depend on it. Guys, let me know if you want me to make a detailed video on how to properly use and take care of torque wrenches. It's not as important since we're just replacing the fork boots, uh, but if you're actually pulling the forks apart, before you tighten the cap bolt on top of the forks, you wanna uh, put the forks in and just tighten the lower clamp bolts and then tighten the cap bolts, and then you can tighten the upper clamp bolts. I think this is just to prevent crimping those threads where the cap bolt screws into before it's actually tightened down. Once those are tightened down, it's not a bad idea to make one final check. They're exactly the same on each side. So just as a note, the height of the front forks has a huge impact on how the bike handles. When you increase the fork height, uh, the bike is actually easier to turn. However, on the downside, it makes the bike less stable. On the other hand, when you decrease that height, uh, the bike becomes more stable. However, it takes more effort to steer and it doesn't take a lot of adjustment to make a big impact. Again, the manual says it's six millimeters from the top top of the fork tube itself, not including the bolt, but this is just how I got it from the factory and I like the way it handles. So I'm just gonna keep it like this. And real quick again, I'm gonna check the steering bearing and I don't feel any slop in there. It's good. Since we have the caliper already off, it's actually a bit easier to put the wheel on before we install the caliper to make sure the rotor is on the right side and the speedometer gear is on there properly in this uh, spacer and this little notch right here needs to insert into this peg rotate the forks to the best position we can and slide it on slide the axle bolt through don't forget the washer thread the nut on hold the axle bolt with the 19 millimeter wrench. And I'm just gonna tighten it up by hand. I'm gonna wait to torque it down once we have it on the ground. Also another thing is uh, don't pull the brake lever when the caliper is off or else you could uh, have a bad day. But this is also a great time to check the brake pads. Those look okay. That one's uh, getting a little worn right there, but it'll last a little bit longer. And if you need to spread them apart, you could just use a plastic trim tool to compress those pistons back in there. Now we can pull the brake caliper down. Make sure the brake line is not gonna be twisted. You can kind of tell if you turn it back and forth. This is the way right here it naturally wants to be. Then thread both of the bolts in with the blue Loctite. And then these bolts need to be torqued down to 30 Newton meters. Then we can go ahead, line this bracket up, thread the bolts in and just snug these up, nice and snug. We'll throw this bracket on, make sure the lines insert properly. And there's actually a little alignment pin on the inner side. And then we can uh, stick the screw in, make sure it's uh, nice and snug. Insert the Speedo cable, move the wheel a little bit so it drops into place. And you can actually see the shaft spin as you move it. That's how you know it's in. And I like to take some pliers and just kind of snug it up just a little bit, but you don't need to crank on it. All right, let's check the speedometer. Get that moving pretty fast. We're going about seven miles an hour. And now is a good time to go ahead and pump the front brake. You may have to push it a few times. You can hear it stopping. 
Make sure it's nice and firm. Now we can go ahead and install the front fender. And this thing does act a little bit as a brace for the front forks. And I believe mine is bent a little bit. Make sure they're all threaded in before you try to tighten them down. All right, those are all tight. We got the front fairing on. Now we can move the top of the boots all the way up and tighten down the clamps. We can remove the straps, the kickstand down, jack the bike up a little bit, undo the lock and let it down. And rest it on the kickstand. Okay, <laughs> make sure the kickstand's all the way down. Where do you do that? There we go. Last but not least guys, we wanna to torque down the axle nut to 90 Newton meters. It's extremely important we don't skip this step. Well, the TW200 is looking much cleaner with some new fresh boots on there. I'm sure uh, we'll be getting plenty of mud on these before too long. It does kind of suck that it's uh, such a pain to replace something so simple, but that's just the way it is with the regular forks, unless you have forks that are inverted. I wanted to go ahead and do that uh, before I uh, install the custom light bar from 3dub 200 and that'll be coming up hopefully in the next video but keeping all that dirt and stuff off of the seals and front forks will keep them in good condition for a long long time but for now i'm just going to go ahead and take the t-dubs for a quick spin but i hope this video was helpful for you guys and anyways i will see you next time peace out